Hey guys, welcome to our 2022 Chick Chat. Sorry we're running a little bit late, but we had issues with this wonderful thing called Facebook. You know, it always works perfectly how it's supposed to. But uh, we got you a little chick cam there, so you could watch the chicks for a little bit while we got started. But thank you for joining us once again. Uh, we decided to set up in the barn this time versus outside because it, it was supposed to be sunny, but it ended up pouring down rain. And now it's sunny again. So that's Oregon weather for you. But anywho, we are here with our friends from Neutrina, from VSI, and from the store. And we are here to talk about anything and everything chickens, answer your questions, and just see what we can do to help you either get started with chickens or continue raising chickens. So guys, why don't you introduce yourselves real quick? Because some may know you, some may not. So I'm Brian Dodd. I am the Neutrina rep for Coastal Farm and Ranch. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been with Neutrina a little over three years now, but been raising chickens since I was knee high to a grasshopper, I was, as they would say <laughs> where I'm he's from, from. He's from back east, the south, so yeah. you might have some sayings and slang that you know <laughs> pop up that you just ignore him. Yeah, it's, it's the easiest way to go. There you go. <laughs> I'm Athena, I work at Coastal. I've been there for about four years. I started there in animal health, and I've been around chickens most of my life. And you're, yeah, and you've worked with us for now how many years now? Four. Four years, yeah. So she's great. If you're ever in the Albany store, have questions on anything about any animals, she's your go-to gal. So, I'm Darcy Pogue. I'm approaching my 29th year with Veterinary Service Incorporated, and I was raised with chickens also since I was knee-high to a grasshopper, or maybe a little shorter than that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And that was maybe a little bit longer than Brian ago, but we won't get into that. We won't get into that. No. <laughs> so, anywho, so yeah, so we're, like I said, to talk about stuff. We were able to pull up uh, the feed. We, my phone, I was not thinking through this, but my phone is in, currently in the chick tank. I don't know if you can switch to that and see all those cute little buggers down there, but um, we picked up some chicks today so we can talk about them. And so, yeah, if you ask questions, uh, we have the live feed here pulled up. To monitor that so guys where do we want to get started I guess let's just start with picking up chicks I mean you know and coastal is your place to go like you can see we have them here yep. um, so currently Athena right now what do we got going on in the stores a little bit of everything depending upon where you go you can see a ton of different varieties uh, most of the time stores get in about 25 of each breed you got your meat birds your layers your ducks and your little bougie chickens that you can just decorate your yard with. <laughs> the little fuzzy, silky ones yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. No, those are great. No, when we were in there today, um, actually to get some for this, I was surprised at how many we had. But then, too, there was quite a few tanks mm -hmm. empty. Um, so just to kind of mention that, just like everything else, um, supply and demand this year. You know, we're having a hard time getting shipments of stuff. Um, so kind of it fluctuates. What, what's our schedule right now kind of for shipments? Uh, for the Albany store, it could differ for other stores, but we typically get them in Wednesdays and Thursdays. So mm -hmm. today we got a shipment from our Jinx hatchery. Tomorrow we'll get another shipment from Jinx and some more from Dunlap. Okay. So yeah, so if we don't have the birds uh, you want or see, um, just wait, they might come in. And you can always find someone like Athena and maybe ask, um, you know what we have and if you can special order because there still is some special ordering mm -hmm. we can do but it's just it's not as easy as, as it has been in the past so so once they so when they, we pick up the chicks at the store kind of go through that process with the end they can come by pick up a chick and they get this cool little box um so we'll put them in it's a beautiful little box i know look at that what's like covered, green? What's that covered green? in that beautiful green plaid oh man uh, from neutrina so a few call outs on the box yep um one make sure that the chicks are your last stop yeah uh, so they need to be the last thing you pick up before you are leaving the store um while it's obviously the most fun part of going to the store this time of year mm -hmm. uh, and everybody hangs out by the chicken <laughs> exactly uh, it's like the cool kids on the bus we're all at the chicken pen um don't pick them up and then walk around the store for an hour because we need to be really focused on keeping these little guys as warm as possible. Just like there are some things to do before you even get into the store, right? So as you can see, we have a brooder here this time, this year. Yep. Um, and that brooder should have everything it needs before you head to the store to pick up your chicks. Why don't you grab, actually grab that phone there real quick, Athena, and, and uh, hand it to me and let's show kind of what we got going on here in the tank. So if you can see here, um, some key important things. Darcy, maybe you want to talk about, about that? that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. 
Always have your facility set up at least a day ahead of time so that the shavings or the pellets, whatever you're using, are up to temperature. Get a burner thermometer, place it at chick level, which is on the floor of the burner, and make sure that it is somewhere between 93 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit so that the birds stay warm because they are very temperature sensitive. So what's, why, while you're on that, what's that little trick? There's a little rule of thumb you can kind of tell when you're looking at chicks to know whether it, this heat lamp is the right height or well, not. First, you'll hear them. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but they will, if they move away from the heat lamp, they're too hot. If they move in under it and clump on each other, they're on the chilly side. So you'll need to raise or lower the heat lamp accordingly to increase or decrease the temperature. That's, That's great. great. So, so then other, other things, the key to have in here. Your, your brooder reflector, this little gadget right here, which is set up in there, mm -hmm. make sure you get a high quality one with a ceramic base. The, Heat lamps we use get very, very hot, and you don't want to have a plastic base because you can melt and create a fire. The lamp is also of extreme importance. We prefer, and, and we're using here, red heat lamps because birds that are under red heat lamps have lower aggression, and birds are very aggressive towards one another. Some people can get away with a clear heat lamp, but it makes them a little agitated, so the red is always better. Your, your bedding, um, highly important as well. Never use cedar. Always use a pine or a hardwood. Um, whether you choose to do shavings, which sometimes get messy, I much prefer what Jess has going on here with, with the, the, the pellets because, because they, they don't create as much of a mess. mess. For your feeders and waters, size appropriate, please, because when they're little, it's just a matter of time and they will run into the water bowl, and if it's deep, you have a problem because a cold chick is a dead chick. Yeah. A wet chick's chick is a cold chick, chick and a dead chick. chick. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and two, we have, I don't know if we have it here. Um, what is the, we use something in the water at the store, uh, right, Athena? And yes. that is something, too, that we want to encourage our customers to, to get <laughs> and then add it into the water. Um, Darcy's going to shuttle around there um, because it's just going to help give them that extra boost and if, if what we're doing at the store we want to make sure you do at home so then that way the chicks just transition so much better so what is the this is chick boost and it's a, a wonderful product probiotic and electrolyte vitamin compact so comes with a little scoop you put a scoop into a gallon of water it turns the water yellow, so if you ever see yellow water in the stores, it's like people it's like, like tang for chickens. It's yeah. like tang you know? for chickens. You, yeah. you know what's funny though? I tell that to people, and they're like, "Tang? What's tang?" <laughs> oh, like, are come you kidding on me? Now. <laughs> what? And it's astronaut drink. I mean, come on. <laughs> We're past that. Joke. I know. <laughs> 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 um, but really, truly, it is. Uh, your electrolytes are like a Gatorade for an athlete, and your probiotics are like eating yogurt. But chickens don't digest yogurt well, so use the proper stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, for sure. Now, we do have a couple questions. Uh, Matt, just so you know, if you want to close that door, it might help not be so cold in here. Um, so we have a couple <laughs> questions here. Uh, let's see. How, uh, Renee has a great question. How many chicks per heat lamp? Um, I guess is what she's wanting to know. I mean, that's a good question. That's a great question. Yeah. It, it depends on your spatiality, and they'll tell you if they're... If they are moving away from it, um, you know, usually you can you, you can, can do 25 chicks mm -hmm. in this size of a tank mm -hmm. uh, for a period of time, and that is not a long period of time. Yeah. As yeah. they grow, you have to expand their their space. Well, as as a, as a Athena can well attest, yeah, yeah there, there's, there's only so, so much time, and then it's only only, only a little, little bit, bit of time, maybe then, about a week. Yeah, and then they'll <laughs> they'll you'll find them we'll find them jumping and running around the store, and that's when we know well it's time to uh, put something over top. But we sell <laughs> like um, that sheeting, the mm -hmm. the screen mesh mm -hmm. that you can just put over top of these. But this while we're on it, these we highly recommend uh, using these kind of like a stock tank or something like this, um, a metal one for your brooders because plastic ones. Um, or those like Tupperware tubs or whatever they're called, Rubbermaid mm -hmm. tubs. They're great, but uh, we've heard and had too many stories of ones melting, and you can figure what happens from there. Yeah, yeah. that's that's the other thing with these brooders. They have uh, these reflectors have a little gadget up here, and then they have this swing arm. 
I usually take this off and yeah. do that with it because um, I don't trust it. Yeah. And I, I suspend this mm -hmm. so that it doesn't it's a little get safer then. Dinged or banged, you know. Yeah. A dog, a cat, a small child could mm -hmm. come up and bump it. And that's something else. When when you take your birds home and you have small children, keep them away from that heat lamp because it could burn them too. Exactly. Yes. No, and that is and that is true. And so this uh, this tank is this is a two by two by four, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is like a really base tank. Works great for starting your chickens out in. And then when you're done with that, if you can, if you have large animals, it's a stock tank. You can make a planter out of it. There's so many different things you can do with stock tanks. If, if you're bored sometime, just look on our blog on our website, <laughs> coastalcountry.com. Tons of great ideas for stock tanks, so you can never go wrong with them. But right. That's kind of what we recommend, and we do sell bigger ones, but. Mm -hmm. Like you said, I mean, how many, you can get, what, 20, 25 chicks in there comfortably yeah. until they hit that weird teenage, teenage. <laughs> phase. Uh, that yeah. really, really ugly phase. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. Some of us never came out of that stage. Yeah. But I'm just, I don't know. know who that was directed at. <laughs> um, so yeah, great question, Renee. Um, let's see, where do we got here? Uh, Chris, I don't know if I quite understand your question, but I'll read it here. Why do my ducks per push out perfectly good fertile eggs? I guess I'm not following. So maybe uh, you can... so I'm assuming that the duck is laying a fertile fertilized egg into a nest and oh. is not sitting on it. Oh, maybe that's um, they're like pushing it out of oh, the way. Maybe that's that what he's saying. And mm -hmm. honestly, that's going to be a duck by duck issue mm -hmm. and potentially a crock pot offense. Um, <laughs> is like a really good way to put that. Um, so like some people will use like a laundry basket or something over top of the duck in the nest to try and convince them to stay put. But if that's not working, um, then that's a duck by duck issue. And you may have to, you may have to take other, other precautions. Yeah. No, they're, they're just like anything else. They all have their own unique personalities and that may be that duck's, duck's personalities. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, so yeah, I hope that Chris, uh, if that answers your question, if not, feel free to, you know, uh, expand on that. Um, let's see, uh, going, I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit so we can kind of move forward. But, uh, Crystal, uh, she's asked if we have bantams. We do. Um, we actually are getting bantams weekly as, as far as having them in the Albany store. We do have a shipment coming this Thursday. Oh, that's good. Okay, okay good to know. And with your bantams, make sure like extra caution around those temperatures because they are so much even smaller. They are very, very fragile. So make sure you are set up well ahead of time. Make sure your temperatures are right. Make sure they're absolutely the last thing that you're buying before you hit the register. And with your waterers, that they're another one you need to be really careful about because if you're using the little shallow waters, you can oh. actually put marbles or yep. rocks yes. in there. That way, they can still get the water out of it with their little beaks, but they don't not drowning, necessarily in jump yeah. in there and get all wet. Yeah. Right. Not or sure. coastal does carry the like thinner edge that are typically for like quail well, or something, well, and is, that uh, that works. might be the right base to buy we have some for base over there, But yeah, we didn't. These I didn't are, bring yeah, the quail base. The quail yeah, base. they're they're not they're yeah. the small ones. Yeah. Um. And and just so you guys all know, yes, this is chick season right now at all of our locations in Oregon, Washington. Um, if you want to find a coastal location near you, um, or you haven't already chosen your favorite coastal location, just go to coastalcountry.com, um, and you can find all the locations there. Um, but yes, this is chick season everywhere, and everything we're going to talk about is pertinent to all those places and to wherever you're at. If you're somewhere else and there's not a coastal, this is still great information. Um, let's see. So I have, let's see, uh, Jessica, my area has a rat and mice problem. How would I proof the coop the best? Rat wire. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, fine mesh. The fine little, mesh. Little yep. hardware wire. And, and we do sell that. And you don't want the really light, thin stuff because mm -hmm. depending on the rats, mm -hmm. they can chew through that. But what, what we did with ours is we actually take and the fence came down. And then if we had enough, it would go under the ground a little yeah, bit. Like an apron. And like an apron. So if you don't, um, just take that rat wire and just run it down into under the ground, kind of bury it because those rats want to burrow in there. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't personally think there's, you don't want to really use any poisons or things because the chickens could get a hold of those. Mm -hmm. Right. Unless you're doing it on the outside where they can't get. Even, even, even then, so, because if, if a mouse eats a little bit of poison, wanders into a tank, uh, chickens are going to eat that mouse. That mouse. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> like, no, they will. For sure. <laughs> you guys carry rat X and mouse X, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it is toxic only to rats and mice. Oh, okay. It's, it's a, the way it 
clogs up their system is not something that bothers any other men. Oh, so that's there, good to know. There is no. something there that's that really works. good to know. Yeah. No, actually, I didn't know that. Um, so, or there's you know traps and things that we can put around, but. Two, that comes down to, you know, we'll talk about this a little later, but just containing your feed as well. Yes. Because yeah. that is going to be, that's why it's drying them, you know? Yeah. Yep. Um, best case scenario is to buy a galvanized garbage can rather than a plastic one. Because in the summer, the plastic ones sweat and then you end up with moldy feed. Yep. So you use a galvanized one. It is chew proof. Well, well that's the thing, too. If they're dedicated enough, they'll chew through that plastic. plastic. Yeah. yeah. So, like, just the same reason why I recommend the metal stock tank. Same thing, you know, it just, it's going to help and go a lot further. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps. And sorry, yeah, I, trust me, we actually are having fat problems right now and it is not fun. And yeah, sometimes it's just sitting out there with a 22 and birdshot and, you know, <laughs> taking care of those rats. Well, and there are bait stations that you guys also sell mm -hmm. that contain the bait, but that doesn't contain the amounts of rats. Right. So, but they're, they're. They provide an additional level of safety for the birds, dogs and cats, and children. And children, that's good. Yeah. Uh, so we have a good question actually about the setup. So Wendy um, has a question. She goes, I have chicks and they want to eat the pellets, the bedding pellets. She changed them to pine shavings. Is this okay? Totally fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely fine. Yeah. Uh, make sure your pine shavings are a like kind of bigger shaving. Not yep. the, not, not yeah, what's the, the, the mini flakes. Not the yeah. mini flakes. Yeah. Cause that can get stuck yeah on their little nostrils and then you can have issues there. But just a standard side pine shaving, totally, totally fine. And if we haven't mentioned before yet, um, cedar is the only thing we really want to avoid. At, at and all And that's because cost. The, the oils, they absorb. can mess with, yeah. Yeah, yep. they absorb through the, the skin of the feet. And, and cause and issues. Cause liver and kidney issues. So yeah, so we don't want to do it. So yeah, Wendy, oh yeah, totally fine. Like she said, just don't get the mini flakes, get the bigger ones. And uh, to be honest, we can't even get a hold of the cedar shavings right now anyways, so nope. that's fine. We can't buy them from us. So, there you go. so don't do that anyway. Um, Elizabeth Lopez has a question. Any alternatives to heat lamps? There are heat pads that are available. Um, it, they're kind of messy. I guess. Yeah, they, no, they do because you put them underneath and it yeah. just yeah. makes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the heat lamps are probably the best option. I've come up with um, if you don't have like a mother hen brooder with a little thermal wafer mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing something along this line, that's going to be your your easiest best bet. Yeah, no, that is great. Um, so yeah, Heather, love the brooders. Let's see, uh, where was I at? And we yeah, we talked about the bantams. So let's move on uh, while I'm looking here. What's the next stage? So once we're in here, they're going to get to that ugly teenager stage. They're going to start jumping out. So, well, actually, let me jump back a second. What are we feeding right now? Oh, it's super important. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's, it's like yes. my entire job. Exactly. Or something. Yeah, we're, we're just like, <laughs> we're holding the box. But no, so in the stores right now, um, Athena, we are feeding them. I, it's a medicated feed, correct? Yes. In the stores, we're feeding them the medicated country companion chick starter. Okay. And so. Yeah, you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah. But we encourage you, like I said, with the other, is that's probably the best bet to start them out on as you're transitioning because then they're used to it. It's what they're eating. Um, but yeah, let's talk feed a little bit. Yeah, so um, chicks, chickens in general, you don't have to be but so careful when you transition from one feed to another. You can... Oh, okay, it's not like dogs or It's not like dogs okay. or horses or anything. We're not really worried about colic mm -hmm. um, or anything like that. So you can play around with it a little bit mm -hmm. uh, freer. And then some stores do also have organic tanks. If that is a yeah. concern of yours, make sure you call ahead. Make sure that the, they do have an organic tank that is being fed and, organic and, feed. And those, yeah, we actually do have those to talk, mm -hmm. talk about later, but Athena can talk on that. It's, it's called our Organic from Day One program. Yep. Um, um, we actually, for our organic takes, we put the ducks, we have a tank full of meat birds and all of our turkeys and game birds inside of the organic tanks because the meat birds and the ducks don't necessarily get the medicated feed. Okay. Yeah. And then that makes it nicer than if you do want to raise the organic from day one and take them home. I mean, because it's not truly organic if we're you're taking these right. on what we're feeding them now and then going home and starting them on organic. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. an organic bird has to be an organic bird from day one. Yeah. Uh, so like they said, majority of stores are using Country Companion Chick Starter Medicated. Mm -hmm. That medication is Amprolium. 
Um, and proleum is purely within the digestive tract. It does not absorb into the body anywhere. It will not end up in eggs, it will not end up in meat. There's literally zero withdrawal period if a layer happens to get a hold of a little or a meat bird happens to get a hold of a little. Gotcha. Um, so it's just in there, and that's a coccidiosis stat. So coccidiosis um, lives in moist, wet soil. So <laughs> where are we? Where are we? <laughs> in the Willamette Valley of Oregon, so guess what? Right. So in general, um, there's a lot of coxie in this area. However, if you are in Redmond or Klamath, probably not so much. Not as much, but still is right. there. Yeah. So, it can be carried by wildlife, although there are species-specific strains of coxie. Yeah. So. so if you end up, um, if you've ever had coxie on your farm before, <laughs> medicated feed. Yep. Absolutely. Um, if it has never been a concern, if you've never raised a bird that had coxie, okay. um, then non-medicated feed would be just fine. So is that is that something that kind of stays in the, sto in the soil? Yep. I mean, is that some, okay. It, it yeah. lives in the soil for a very prolonged period of time. Okay, and there's not really a way to get rid of it. So nope, you can't clean dirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there you go. That's true. <laughs> no amount of lime will yeah, fix this yeah. problem. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but all you have to really do if you're going to raise them with not wanting to, to uh, do a medicated feed, uh, you're, you're gonna have more maintenance. The bedding has to stay dry. The birds may need to stay in longer and not be out rooting around in the, the yard mm -hmm. and whatnot. It's exposure makes a difference. Makes a difference. Yeah. yeah. So while, while we're kind of on that, uh, Nathan has a question. We were talking about organic. Does organic feed make better chickens and eggs, or is, is the chick boot is like is the chick boost organic, or, or and, is that kind of organic feed makes organic chickens? Yeah. Uh, there, there's nothing better or worse about an organic chicken. It is just a difference. It's just a difference. It's, yeah. it's, it's a personal preference. Right. Yep. yep. Yeah. If you live your life eating organic feed, then eating organic food, <laughs> uh, then you are going to want to feed to have organic eggs. Gotcha. If you don't go to the grocery store and buy organic eggs, it's not really a. Then it's you've already made your decision. It's just a preference per mm -hmm. se. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No, that's good enough. So great question, Nathan. Um, so another question along the feed. Then um, as we're moving up. Um, Nathan also asked when you should start giving grit, but let's talk about the process kind of, of moving chickens up, when they should move from the starter and those things, and then when can we give them grit, when can we give them, you know, like the treats, we got some grubs and things around here. Okay, <laughs> while it's feed, I'll keep going. Uh, so what I didn't get to is that we do have different types of starter. So oh, yeah. there is the country companion, there's also nature wise starter, which is going to have additional pre and probiotics. It's gonna have flock shield, which is specifically for your immune system, um, as well as now our NatureWise has additional um, essential oils. Oh, yeah. I, I was like, why <laughs> is that? No, it, well, <laughs> yeah, it's a ha it has new essential oils. And we've talked about it before, like it smells so amazing. Good. Like, so good, yeah. But what we're seeing through those essential oils is actually our birds are developing at almost a week sooner uh, and able to get kicked okay. out of your house at almost a week sooner, which is really, really cool because those essential oils are helping with nutrient absorption. So you are gonna be on a chick starter, um, medicated, non-medicated, nature-wise, country companion, whatever your choice is, for somewhere between 16 weeks or the onset of laying. Um, and so okay. that's, our bag say 16 weeks, and for some breeds that's wonderful because you're going to be getting a little bit of calcium in ahead of the eggs coming in so like a little bit of calcium for those first those first little starter eggs yeah they're, <laughs> they're, they're so like cute balls. yeah they're so cute um but if you buy one of the fancier breeds that mm -hmm. athena was talking about or a bantam mm -hmm. they're not yeah yeah like real big they, yeah they go a long they're not laying for a while so <laughs> you really take them that far with because you know in my mind it's like well they look like a normal chicken so we should be feeding them something else mm. but no you'll take them up until yeah. they'll lay okay. Okay. absolutely your first egg you get excited and change your feed and change, okay. <laughs> yeah there you go it, it's time there it's you go time. it's time yep <laughs> so then like with the grit and things like that you we probably don't want to be doing that until they're laying so Correct. grit actually has nothing to do with their age or their maturity. It has to do with what they're being fed. Okay. So if they are in a brooder like this, where the only thing they are eating is chick starter, mm -hmm. you don't need grit. Correct. That commercial feed is going to break down within their gizzard totally fine. 
The day you start giving treats, which I would never recommend doing until you're old enough to be a layer. Okay. Um, but the day you start giving treats, or they start getting a little bit of time outside, outside. on the grass or anything like that, when their diet is no longer purely feed. Just the feed. Then they need to grit. Yes. So the grit and is and let's, let's go back to not just feed, because let's clarify with um, crack corn. Yeah, crack and corn. Scratch, those Any, they need they need the grit for because yep. chickens do not have teeth. We know that. Yep. And so those rocks that they ingest, or the grit as we call it, um, go into the gizzard, which is just a big muscle that acts like uh, grist mill making flour. Mm -hmm. it, it breaks down the, the higher fiber things and allows the food to pass in through the the crop into the intestine and be digested. If you don't provide that and they get into some of that stuff, you can end up with sauerkraut and then you have a problem. Okay. Right. Yeah. So they can't. So okay. They can't so the grit, so the grit is what's helping with that. It's yeah. their teeth. Okay. It's like, their teeth. It's their exactly. teeth. It's the, the mechanical teeth, separation mechanical. Yeah. that you are going to get in, in a bird. And that's not just chickens. That's also ducks. Like that's, that's ducks, birds in general. We have to have, everything. we have to have that mechanical separation yeah. that you get from rocks. So, so Travis, uh, Raymond here asked a question, kind of along this with feeding. When it comes to mealworms, mm -hmm. when can the chicks start eating them and how much is too much? And so we at Coastal actually carry a couple. We have, uh, where are they at? Oh yeah, uh, you wanna grab them? We have the mealworms. Um, and then also we have the other, uh, sorry, it's a, I don't know if he can touch the bag, but it's a, it's a Grubbly's product. And they're not mealworms, they're the, these are grubs. Grubs. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, it smell, it's the funny, they smell. The grubbies are grubs. Yeah, like, like grubbies, coffee. grubs. What? They smell like coffee. Yeah, they do. They, they actually have a smell to them that's different than, than like the mealworms. But these are kind of the two treats. So what, like, let's say with the mealworms, what's, when can you have those and how much is too much? You know, it's like, I mean, I'd want to eat a bunch of, I'd want to eat a bunch of gummy worms, but if I eat too many gummy worms, then my stomach's going to be churning, yeah. you know? Well, so, I, if, when you are little, chick starter only when you are a little chick starter only until you are a layer chick starter only is like my perfect world that's my mantra as well that's my perfect yeah. world and then after that treats yep. which these would be treats mm -hmm. crack corn would be treats yep. scratch would be treats vegetables that you bring out from your house also treats, treats. Yeah. should never exceed more than 10 percent of their diet okay gotcha and, so and, whatever and they're getting they yeah simple lay terms 10 percent kind of a rule of thumb, what you throw out if your chickens, and it will vary based on how many you have, mm -hmm. how many birds you have, but if they haven't consumed it in 10 minutes, that's too much. Yeah. No, that's true. And like I said, like you think of it, it's just a treat. And, and two, I don't know if this is going to be sacrilegious or not, but, but even scratch is kind of more of a treat. It's it, not a it, whole yeah. meal. It's, it's not, not more meal. of a treat. It is, it is a, a treat. treat. <laughs> it is absolutely yeah. French fries. When you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about a hen laying an egg, the amount of calcium that goes into that eggshell is astronomical. And the mm. amount of calcium in scratch is... Minuscule. Minuscule. So, they're not, they, yeah. so they're not nothing. getting enough, in a sense, they're not getting enough, uh, they protein. can eat it, but it's not getting enough protein stuff. Like not you said, protein, it's fat, or calcium, or calcium. Yeah. Yeah. like yeah. none and, of those and things. And what happens, you know, we, we spend this time to make these chicks grow into real strong, good birds by providing proper nutrition. Mm -hmm. If we don't continue that thought process, when they start laying eggs, they'll start stripping their body of, the, of calcium yes. and the things that they need out of the bone and, and whatnot. So. so so while you're on that, this brings up another thing. Uh, you know, a lot of people will talk about feeding uh, the egg, like when they're eating eggshells egg back to them and things like that. <laughs> and that leads into a whole other problem, kind of what you're mentioning. It does, yeah. I, <laughs> it, it, back in the day, that used to be what they had to do. Nowadays, we don't have to feed the eggshells back to the birds, and I'm, I'm one of those people and personally, staunchly a believer that no matter how much you mm -hmm. run the rolling pin over it in it's, the bag and make it fine, they're still well, going to... And it's, and it's kind of just circulating the same, so you're, you're, you're depleting, you're depleting slow, as slowly you as you go. You're depleting. Yep. So that's why you have... Oyster this. shell. There you Oyster go. Shell. Yeah, so this should be in a bowl, in a something somewhere just sitting there. And it's gonna be really, really strange because some birds need a lot, some birds don't. It gets very personal. Mm -hmm. um, and like with my flock, it used to sit there and nothing was gone, nothing was gone, nothing was gone, nothing was gone. 
it's empty. Like it was very all at once. They just all of a sudden they need they'll eat it when they need it. They like, they right. will eat it when they need it. Their body knows uh, that they need calcium just like our body right. knows that we need food. There you go. Yeah. And and Athena, we sell we sell covered up sizes of this, don't we? I'm trying to think. This, just this, this one comes is in this size. Just the okay, seven. Just that yeah. size. Okay. Yeah. Do you have other brands that are larger sized? Mm -hmm. and, but it's and it's all the, and that's the thing. I mean, to be honest, there's not much difference in oyster. I mean, oyster shells, oyster shells, oyster shell. Oyster shell is oyster shell is oyster shell. And honestly, sure. if you find it, then buy it because yeah, uh, yes. like it's and been in short supply, short supply like yeah. nationwide for a little bit. Yeah. So okay, like you said, yeah, the, the feeding it is gonna be free choice, and they're gonna feed as much as they as they need how you feed it is important too um you guys sell those little mini pig feeders you have the little squares and i just open a bag of that and a bag of grit and pour them in simultaneously oh. so they're a feed through they look like yep. a rabbit feeder a sifter mm -hmm. but um they moisture doesn't harm it <laughs> doesn't go bad um but having it there and separate a lot of people ask Oh. Uh, many times do I yeah. put it in, in no. with their feet? No, because no. no. then you're, yeah, you can push too much or to push whatever, yeah. And They'll pick around it and the feed will be gone and that's what's left. And yep. yeah. That doesn't work. And your feed has some calcium in it. It's actually what makes a layer feed a layer feed Yeah, is the yes. calcium. And then if you're buying the new Neutrina um, layer, which is right up here, beautiful in that little kind of tealish bag. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that has additional vitamin D3 in it, okay. which actually increases your calcium absorption from that feed. So that's, which bag was it again up here? It's like this... The, the, the shield. Yep, yeah, perfect. With the flock shield and stuff. Yep. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. What, what does the flock shield mean? What so is that? Flock shield is a... I can never say this Pro word. Proprietary. Proprietary. It's okay. I can't say... <laughs> I, can't, I can't say... Rural. Rural? Got it. There you go. Just don't put that on your bag. I'll be fine. Be wise, yeah. This is rural. Theme. So it's a proprietary <laughs> yeast blend, uh, which just means that it's a really fancy yeast culture okay. that is going to sit within your digestive tract. Um, depending on the source you use, somewhere between 60 and 90% of your immune system is in your gut. That's us. Yes. That's Good bugs in the gut means good. Yeah. Yeah. Good that's health. us. That's every animal. Um, so... We're using that yeast culture to make sure that you have the good bugs in the gut so that your immune system is better. Gotcha. Yeah, the good, the good bugs in the gut, they kind of make it self-limiting for anything bad to get started. Oh, yeah, because there's, you know, there's a lot more of the good guys, so when the bad guys try to start, they just push them out. They right. can't colonize them. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, while we're still kind of on feed, uh, Jim Shepard has a good question here. And I'm not sure where you live, Jim, uh, but he said, many folks around here like to feed a 28 to 30% starter to turkeys, game birds, um, clear up until harvest time. Is there a positive or negative to this? And I assume they're probably feeding that protein to these game birds to give them growth? Uh, or, I mean... Well, and to keep them calm. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah bunch of things but so he must be I'm, I'm assuming he's probably living on the east side of the mountains in oregon or washington somewhere to be honest if that's what game birds need a much higher protein okay. source than chickens do okay. so do turkeys so do turkeys yeah especially at the inception of getting a turkey so and, and so that is actually so like you said you know 23 percent starter to turkeys and gamers um clear up until harvest that's fine that i mean it's how we do our meat bird right like if mm -hmm. you're on if you're raising a meat bird you are on meat bird from day one through uh, now, you do monitor how you feed meat birds, right? Mm -hmm. They go three days with full meat bird feed and then 12 hours on, 12 hours off. So watch your game birds, make sure they're not getting too big. Mm -hmm. um, watch your turkeys, make sure they're not getting too big. If so, start limiting feed in the, the evening hours. But, but that should be. But yes, a, a game bird feed, which is going to be that high level of protein from start to finish. And you can go back to like your meat bird on turkeys. You, after absolutely. Their, after their... Yeah. Through that adolescent stage, which is even worse than turkey. <laughs> <Yes>. so, <laughs> so while we're on that, it's actually this is actually a really good time to jump over to that. So we carry, we have a couple different varieties of meat birds at the store, right? Mm -hmm. Indiana? Like what, what's what's the main ones that we have right now? Uh, we have the country companion one, I believe. We well, the, like the oh, birds. Sorry, the birds. birds. Oh, for so birds. birds. Yeah. If it's... Um, we have Cornish, mm -hmm. Red Rangers, Freedom Rangers. We just started the two new options that. We started carrying this year. We got the Aquila slow grow meat birds, and then we have oh, the Sakita slow grow meat birds. So that what we're that, start what's a in. slow grow versus a? Do you know? I'm so, not entirely okay. sure. I've it, never seen them before. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. Well, that's good. <laughs> 
basically your fast grow birds are designed to, to get get there in 46 and one half days. Okay, and what? Very <laughs> simple. Well, and that's what I wanted to talk because it's interesting because there is a very specific system to raising meat birds, and yes. so I wanted to get to mm -hmm. that next. Yeah. So yeah, so that when when you're thinking of the birds that you get in the grocery store, they have it down to a science that at 46 days they haven't maximized their profitability on them, and at 47 days they're losing money. Okay, so, so right there. And a half, boom, boom. they're gone. Um, the medium so grow the, the slow grow, slower yeah. grow. Yeah. They the, just, they're just slower to grow. They just it? grow just slower. Stop. Same yeah. with all of your rangers. If, okay. Because mm -hmm. the rangers are designed to be able to live a bit longer. They're going to go out. They're going to walk around. They're going to range. Mm -hmm. um, so because of that, they can actually live on starter layer. They can be on meat bird. Like all of that's fine. They're not going to have the problem that like the Cornish do with getting too big. Too big. Yeah. The specific Cornish are the ones that you have to limit that feed as they grow. And it's the one that their picture's right on, on the front bag. of that bag. Yeah. If your meat birds look like this, we limit feed for 12 hours. If your birds don't look like this and you're gonna have it for meat, they're gonna they're just, be better at so controlling themselves. Is there, is there, a, <laughs> is there a, on the, and you know, sorry, we've jumped to chicks to actually, there's, you know, with, with birds, mm -hmm. there's, kind of three different varieties. There's your layers, mm -hmm. there's your meat birds, and then there, there's your crossovers, which which you can have. They're not the best layers, they're not the best meat birds, but you can have, and then, you know, when it comes time to harvest, you can harvest them for, for, for whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But is there, is there a difference in the eating of, in the quality of the meat between a, a meat, you know, a slow grower and uh, you know, is, is this like the, the Wagyu of the, of the chicken world? <laughs> you know, they grow slower and so they're more, it's just, it's just kind it's, of whatever works best for you. It's what works best for you, I okay. think, yeah, personally. It's, it's a personal um, preference. Yeah, you know, and, and age of the bird. Age of the bird is a big deal. Well, and, that, and that's what I was wondering because, yeah. you know, sometimes, you know, you can butcher those old birds, but they're just maybe good for soup birds. I was going to say, you know, those are Brunswick it, stew. You know? yeah. Those are Brunswick stew chicken salad birds and nothing, <laughs> and nothing else. Birds. There you go. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because they, they get tougher. I mean, yeah. yeah. No, and that's, that's yeah. true. That's, that's what I was getting at. So they get tougher. There is a difference in taste. I, I don't say it's a difference in quality, but there's okay. absolutely a difference in, in taste to me between uh, what I lived in Africa for a few years, so we, right, yeah. we called them village birds mm -hmm. versus broilers. Okay, so if you're if we go like the standard like Cornish cross, yep. the ones that just blow up big, mm -hmm. they're quick. What is kind of that procedure when you pick them up? Let's let's go from day one to day forty five and a half or whatever it is. Forty six and, and a half. half. Sorry, oh. forty six and a half. You know, I, I just picture like they're skinny and then all of a sudden forty six and a half. Forty day forty five, then day forty six and a half. They're just like, Damn. you know, by then they're like waddling around exactly. because they're so heavy. Yeah. So I mean, the the procedures very similar to these guys, except that your feed is different. So it wouldn't be a starter; it would mm -hmm. be a meat bird. And you're gonna uh, take that all the way to all the way to to, to the, the finish day, line. To the finish line. Uh, okay. Yeah, but for three days they get it free fed, just like your layers. And that's three days after you, they're born, or after that's you pick three them days up. after hatch. So if after they are hatch. four days old in your store, they've already had their three days. Okay. If they're five days old in your store, they've already had their three days. Okay. And then after that three days, they have it twelve hours, and then they take it away twelve hours. So uh, most of so we, typically. When we get our birds, they're what three days old anyway. I mean, they're gonna be by the time you pick them up in the store, they're gonna be past that. But they wouldn't have eaten yet. When you get them, oh, when we the get them first in the store. Yeah, yes. they, they haven't yeah. eaten until they've spent three days in your store. Yes. So ask the wonderful people in Coastal, yes. how many days old is this bird? And um, then go on from there. And then go on from there. Okay. And then, like you said, they're gonna get it at. 12 hour, or what was that, 12 hours, what would be 12 hours without? 12 on, 12 off, yep. Okay, and just all the way up to that time? 46.5. So that's actually pretty simple. <laughs> there you go. When you're, when you, I'm there. When you're wanting there. to raise <laughs> meat birds, just do that and then be ready to harvest them. And to a coastal, we carry a lot of the supplies you need for harvesting. Uh, we carry those cones. I didn't bring any of these cones. It make it real easy um, for doing that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's there's even some the mobile. Oh, yeah, the pluckers. 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 Oh, the whiz bang pluckers. Those are actually, it looks really weird, but I tell you what, that actually saves a lot of time. It oh, really does. Massive like, amounts of time. Mass, I mean, I remember sitting around with my great grandma when we were little, like, and you're all covered in wet 
sticky yes. fat on <laughs> for boiling them and you know uh -huh. like, don't want to eat chicken for a while. No, you yeah. don't. You don't. <laughs> chicken, chicken is not. Yeah. The smell no. Is they have awful. to sit in the freezer for yeah. a couple weeks till you yes. forget. Yeah. But those oh, pluckers do make a difference. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we have all the spice you need for that as well. As like I said, as well as even brooding. You know, starting. Um, which we carry incubators, um, all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. to raise chicks from, from hatching. Um, okay, so now we, let's see. We had another uh, question, I think, on... Uh, so raising chickens um, and Jim, yes, Squim. That's great. That's one of our newer stores. Um, that's interesting that they have a lot of game birds up there in Squim. So that's awesome. I nice. wouldn't have think of that. Um, what's, the, what's the benefit, Chris has a question, of raising... Uh, open range chicken versus pin contained when it comes to egg quality and then two there's a few different things we want to make sure with feeding with that uh, maybe you can talk about that because sometimes when they're open range they may not be getting all the proteins and all the things they need so you still need to give them i was gonna good, say you know? he is clearly well trained <laughs> well, hey, i've had a lot, of good, a lot of these good conversations with you so i've learned a lot i may not raise chickens i have cows but you can hear them out there but um, <laughs> so what's like I said? What's the difference between pin raised, open range, and what? Sh how should we feed them and take care of them differently? So in terms of feed, um, we don't know what your chicken is doing when it's out off by itself, um, and none of us are watching them, but so closely we're mm. not dialing into all the protein and whatnot they're getting. So we do typically feed them a higher protein feed if they're free range because they're going to eat a little less of it. Mm -hmm. So in your stores, there's Country Companion High Pro. Mm -hmm or uh, Country Feeds Egg Producer. Okay. Both of those are 21%, uh, and they're specifically designed to have that higher protein so that even though they're eating less, we're gonna hit an optimal amount of protein of around 16% 6%, in their total diet, uh, which is like our normal layer. Whereas if they weren't free ranging, the normal layer would give them that 16%. So if they're out eating bugs and everything, and so they come back into where their feed is, and they might eat 50-50, they're still getting that average right. of that 16% over time. And think of it, when they're out free ranging, you're gonna be, it's like giving them treats. You know, mm -hmm. In yeah. essence, yeah. they're going to be diluting their diet. Mm -hmm. And there's some maintenance things that go with that. Um, there's some predatory issues that you run into when they're out and about True. free ranging. And there's always that cagey hen that decides, <laughs> yeah. I'm a nest over here and your your egg production makes no well that's I mean, <laughs> surprise <laughs> eggs surprise that's the thing you say that because we would do that at, at my parents and they're like man the girls all stop laying mm -hmm. what are they doing and then we go to pull the baler out for the year and there's 200 eggs in there yep surprise you know, like oh guess what they were still doing it but just yeah. in the wrong spot and and if you happen to have a rooster which you can't be in the city and have a rooster but yeah obviously if you're if out, the, yep. out in the country and you have a rooster you might have 200 chicks coming in. Right. Well, that's good. Exactly. And that could be all of a sudden like, oh, wait, there's a whole bunch of chicks out. Instead of surprise eggs, you have surprise, surprise babies. babies. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I kind of like, personally, I can like a, a cross between the two, having them caged, but letting them out during the day. They can roam around and do stuff and scratch around and then come back and they're still getting their good feed and all the stuff yeah. they need and protected and you know that they're laying in the, in the, in the pen then. You know, the mm. birds have become our pets with benefits, basically. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people just like to open the pen when they get home in the evening and mm -hmm. it's nice outside. They're wine drinkers, mm -hmm. they'll sit in their Adirondack chairs and have a glass of wine or whatnot yep. and relax, let the birds out for a little bit, grab their bag of mealworms, put mm -hmm. it in the, the coop and the birds go back in and you lock the door and you're done. No, it makes it nice. And two, by doing, by feeding too, that's a good way to bring them back in there, you know, for sure. shaking that. I know too, with like, with like the mealworms or the grubs, oh man, sometimes just shaking that bag, they're like, it's like chicken crack. I yeah. mean, they know, they're like, they come running because they want it. Well, they're easily trainable. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, it's super fun. And they're also creatures of habit. So if you put them up consistently at the same time, mm -hmm. they will migrate over into this area. They know you're coming. Oh, they do. They're going to wait yeah. for the bag, but they know you're there coming. You they're like, hey, we're waiting. We're, yeah. I'll be yeah. looking at their right. <laughs> Yeah, trust me, they have better clocks than we do. Uh, like, yeah. Oh, man. Um, so, yeah, that's great. Uh, let's see. Can I use, this is another question, Nathan has a good question. Can I use limestone in place of oyster shell? You know, with oyster shell getting harder to find, is that still gonna give you the calcium? Is it gonna break down the same or, or is it gonna be, what's your thoughts on that? 
Part of the reason oyster shell works so well is the size of it's very, very specific and the edges of it are very specific. And it's part of why eggshells don't work as well is that they don't break down in the same manner and lime, oh, lime okay. is gonna have that same So problem. it doesn't break, yeah, so it's gonna be yeah. different. You're not gonna so in, a, in a pinch, mm -hmm. it oh. would suffice, but it's not the preferred. Right. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, Travis has a good, oh, let's see, Travis, you have a question there. Is this good to give a chick? But I don't see anything else. Uh, so maybe, I don't know if you're trying to attach something. So maybe you can ask that again um, and let me know. Um, and we'll try to get that answered for you. Um, <laughs> the is there what? What are they doing? There's a little they're bit of chick Kong. Oh, chick Kong. Chick -Kong food. Trust me, we're not <laughs> running. We're not running illegal chick fights here. I'm sorry. We're, we're not. I promise you. Um, Mary Lewis has a good question. What turkey breeds do you would you have that you'd recommend for 4-H? Um, she adds on to it. They need to be less than 24 weeks and weigh between 15 and 35 pounds. And I'm assuming that's at fair. And I know we've actually had. Um, uh, it's kind of funny. We've had some kids over the last couple of years that have gotten turkeys from us, specifically turkeys, mm -hmm. that have won a grand champion at their local fair, and we, we've tried to buy those. Because it's kind of neat. You know, it's neat to see that they buy those. But what do we have right now? I mean, really, it's the, the bronze, the... We have the bronze broad-breasted, the white broad-breasted, and we also have the black broad-breasted. Okay. So do you know, I, so when I did 4-H, um, I was in larger animals. I never did smaller birds. But, so I don't know, is, is there a preference or is there, does 4-H want you to have specific ones or by county or do, do you know, or is there different classes Well, for if it? they're looking for a weight, it's going to be specific to what breed they choose. Okay. And all three of those are kind of like our fast growing. They're kind of like meat birds. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so you might have to maybe look then at your time from when you pick them up to when mm -hmm. fair is to make sure or if if there's a class for heritage breeds there's the palms there's oh. there's other breeds that are are slower grow and they mature out smaller okay yeah or like if you can't find one of those heritage breeds and you got to get one of these big big guys you can monitor feed but you would have to do it very regularly do oh, weight check-ins okay. and get real specific about how much you are offering up and what type of return you're seeing. Okay, yeah. so you still can, you can, you can regulate that a yeah, little it's bit. Like, yes. It's like a show pig. Uh, yeah, no, you, very much. You gotta you, watch. Yeah. You need them to gain, you throw it at them. If you need yep. them to lose, you hold, hold back. back. Always feed them, though. Like, don't yes, skip don't, don't days. Stop, no. Don't skip days. They're not into the new uh, fancy, right. you know, uh, diets where you don't eat for two no. days and eat food and whatever. A juice fast is not yeah. a thing for a bird. <laughs> it's not acceptable. Yeah. So uh, Travis did clarify. Thank you, Travis. Um, he was asking about the product Hydro Hen. Is this good to give to chicks? Um, uh, I see it now. Hydro Hen. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard it. It's a supplement for inclusion in drinking water, three in one probiotics, electrolyte acidifiers. Do you guys, either of you know about that? And I don't know if we carry it. Do you know? Have you heard of that? I haven't seen that one. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, it's got the basics, like, what you would mix your own. With, yeah, so it's kind of like what we're doing this the, the for, boost, the, yeah. for the boost. Yeah. yeah. So it's probably very similar to that boost. Um, and so, yeah, it sounds like it'd probably be okay for them. It certainly wouldn't hurt anything. Yeah, well, yeah, it's not going to yeah. yeah. hurt them. Uh, I'm mean, just... Elizabeth, sorry, we missed this earlier. What is a... So this kind of gets into some of the breeds now and the different uses. Because we know that there's backyard chicks, free-range chicks, and... Uh, very much pet in the house chicks uh, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I know, I know some people to have some. So she, Elizabeth, has a good question. What is the best kid friendly breeds? We Go. have this. I was going to say. <laughs> black Australorps and uh, are like the black lab uh -huh. chickens. Okay, in my that's opinion. good. And then the I love wine dots. I dots, love yeah. wine dots. Yeah, um, I. It's what I grew up with. I think they're super friendly and super mm -hmm. sweet. Um, but and we, I believe, have the goldens and the silvers. Yes, we, and yeah. we also brought in the Colombian lace wine. Oh, dots. The, okay. Ooh. And Very then cool. sometimes you'll find the blue red wine dots, mm -hmm. which is on the front of that feather fixer. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. And so those are, and we even have like Orpingtons that are very like buffs. Right. Buff, yeah. or, you know, a lot of those that yeah. you, if you spend time with them, they're gonna, they're gonna bond to you. But there are a few breeds maybe that you should kind of watch out that are kind of the jerks of the. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> some of those. I, I will say jerks. we had some pearl, we had some Polish ones. <laughs> with the little poofy hair, and I think they just had attitudes, and they didn't like. I, um, you know. There's higher strung. I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like leghorns or runners, like yeah. good luck catching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
It's depending upon what hatcher you get. Sometimes you'll get that with your Rhode Island Reds. Yeah. Too. Okay. They're this. The sleek bodied ones seem to be the higher. The higher ones. Yeah. ones that wanna. <laughs> You know, no, no. Us poofy ones, we they, they, they're not we, stay, we stay put a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, now, there you go, exactly. Well, and so, like, some of the, you know, and there's some are that just, you know, you're with any flock, with any herd, with anything, you're going to have ones that are going to be, there's going to be a hierarchy. There right. You know? yep. Yeah. And there's also going to be friendly and not friendly. Um, and there are advantages to some of those yep. sleeker bodied ones. Like, yep. um, if, heaven forbid, but you have a predator attack, a running bird that's gonna freak out and get out of there has better odds yeah. than yeah. like yeah, an Orpington most, that's gonna ability. sit put. <laughs> like that's you don't have the greatest odds. Yeah. Um. So let's see. So so yeah. Hopefully that answers your question. Like I said, and and we have information on all of our chickens. Um. And there's some great resources out there to help you find. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. But two, like anything, it's just if you're spending time with it and doing stuff, it will kind of bond to you yeah well uh, you mentioning the polish that's interesting because there are those fancy little birds like yeah. the polish and the silkies and they get their eyes covered and they yeah. are prone to being picked off okay. by predators so that's where that attitude comes from so um we're gonna i'm gonna jump back there he's having some issues or something but let's um go from there so we're moving on then now and we're, we're when should we then switch to like we've switched to a layer pellet yeah. Or a layer feed. Mm -hmm. uh, what then do we need to? Let's let's get into talking eggs, I guess. And I know <laughs> before we get started, I know where Darcy's gonna go. So, oh, so do I. So do so I. I <laughs> say it's, it's, it's her. Well, let's get. I'll get the box out for her. She can stand, stand up on up. it. Yeah. Uh, but no, let's talk eggs and stuff while I go check on and see what he needs some help with real quick. Sure. Sure. You go ahead with your feed. I'll okay. Go yeah. So yeah. again, we've hit that sixteen weeks at. We've hit that 16 weeks or onset of laying. We're seeing our eggs. Um, don't feel disappointed if your first ones are really small. That's, that's normal. It's natural. Um, your chickens have to get used to laying those eggs and they will grow into like actual eggs. Not that that egg itself, but the chickens <laughs> will lay bigger, bigger and bigger eggs until they're around that normal size. And you're gonna want those birds to be on a layer feed. Uh, so Neutrina has a lot of layer feeds available to you at Coastal. Um, there's Country Companion layer uh, pellets, crumbles, which are both gonna be 16%. And then that Country Companion High Pro for more of a free ranging bird. Um, and then Nature Wise. Uh, so you have our Nature Wise layer pellets and crumbles. Both of those now have additional vitamin D3 for calcium absorption. Um, both of those now have essential oils, um, which we actually, super cool, are seeing an additional egg per week per chicken with the addition of those uh, essential oils. So that's wonderful. Um, Isn't it also good for worm control to some extent because natural? So I'm not allowed to make that to claim. That. Okay. I can't say that, but people do use herbs for that reason. Yeah. Um, but no, wait, I can't say about? that. Uh, <laughs> this is Oregon, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chicken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oregano, rosemary, and thyme. Oh, okay. Um, and they, <laughs> yeah, yeah. These are really laid back chickens. Important. Um, but other layers that exist in that NatureWise line are feather fixers. So feather fixer can be used for molt, which I'm sure we'll get to, but also can just be a layer that you leave your bird on from this point forward. Hardy Hen, which is a yellow bag um, that has a black Australorp on the front of it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's a soy-free formula that has additional omega-3s and 6s that the omega-3s and 6s aren't actually for the bird itself. Those are going to make its way into the egg, creating an egg that is lower in cholesterol. So it's a healthier egg. When we feed, which one is it we feed? It's a Nature Wise, the one that smells really good. And I think it's a hearty. Hardy hen, Hardy the yellow hen, bag. It's kind of the yellow bag. Yeah. yeah, we love that. Our chickens love it, and man, it's that it just creates really, really good eggs. Yeah, and then Naturewise also has an all flock. So all flock, um, it would be if you are raising multiple species that are together. If you have the ability to keep them separate, I would prefer it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I would prefer a duck have a duck feed and a chicken have a chicken feed. But if they're together. Um, then it all flock gives everybody everything that they need, including that niacin for, for the waterfowl. And so, oh, go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, and then since you have the birds and they're on their good layers, you're going to get eggs 
which leads you to Darcy. Well, let me, well, while you're talking, before we let her get on her soapbox, uh, not that that's bad. We love it. It's a good, it's a good topic that there's a, it's just, we say soapbox because there's a lot of, there's very, both sides are very much. Yeah. But with all these feeds, I think Matt has a slide you can pull up. There's this great program There's called a, See the Difference. See the Difference. Yeah, Neutrina See the yes. Difference. Or Nature Wise See the Difference. Uh, so through that, on yep. a link that we are posting. We're going to post this link on this. I was um, that you can see, um, But you can see too when he pulls that up. There's a link, uh, Matt, that will pull it up for us, that um, is... It's, well, it's like, so it's going to take you to a Neutrina yep. page, um, and then on that Neutrina page, there's another little link that you got to click. But by clicking that, you fill out a little bit of information, and we're going to send you a $10 off coupon yes. uh, for NatureWise Starter. So like really, and this is like kind of first come first serve. Like this is a national yeah, thing. Yeah, it's right a now. national thing. So you have to beat the rest of the country. So come on, Oregon and Washington, let's go. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We can show <laughs> um, But <laughs> click the link, uh, get that $10 off coupon. And if you signed up for Plaid Perks, it will also let you get 500 Plaid Perks points, which is like our uh, frequent buyer kind of deal. So actually, he has a slide on that he might be able to bring up too. So the Plaid Perks, which I think we've talked about this before. Yeah. But if you guys haven't heard about this, this is great. Um, Neutrina has really simplified their frequent buyer program. We used to have these cards for different feeds, buy 10, get one free, all kinds of stuff. But... Um, now it's super simple, like you go to plaidperks.com. Plaidperks.com, take a picture of your receipt, upload it, per dollar you get a point, and then you get to use those points to shop on plaidperks.com. So you can buy whatever you want. Uh, there are hoodies on there, there are hats on there. Oh, yeah, I got this cool hat, all There's kinds of stuff. There's a mini fridge on there. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm determined. No. <laughs> I want a mini fridge. Sadly, I only have a dog right now, so my plaid per Perks Perks points are pretty low. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> um, but all of those things are on there, including coupons. So you can use them to get money off of your next purchase. No, and that's great. And like I said, it covers any of those, in their full line of feeds. So like I use it for our cattle feed, uh, for dog feed, um, you know, and it's super nice. You just take a picture, send it in, scan it, and you get the points because yeah. I am saving up for that mini fridge. It looked <laughs> great in the barn, you know, or right. my office. I agree. Know? I agree. But yeah, any bag that you purchase that says Neutrina, whether you're feeding chickens, horses, sheep, whatever you got, if it says Neutrina, it can be part of that plaid perks. Yep. Um, so use it and get $10 off. Like, No, that's great. Right, right now, just go yeah, get it. Because yeah. that goes a long ways, especially with just every price of everything, you know, are going up. And like I said, we do the best that we can at Coastal to hold on to that as long as we can. You yeah. know, we eat that because how, you know, if we get a price change or things go up, it's not very nice for our customers all of a sudden that everything's jacked up, you know? Yeah. So we, we hold on to that as long as I can, so that helps. But before we jump over that feeding, you know, we have a couple different options for feeders at Coastal. Um, you know, we have, like, we have some here. Um, these ones, we have a really big one. I don't know if you can see it. It's clear over here. Um, maybe Matt can, can look over at it here in a second. But um, that, I think, is that, what size is that? Is that a 40 pound? I think that one's a 40. 40. So that should take a full bag of feed. Mm -hmm. um, but how, how, oops, how long Meals should, down. you know, if you have two birds, do you really want to have that big a feeder and put that in there? Is that feed going to go bad or, bad or does it not matter? It, well, there's two things that could happen. It could go bad, depending upon where it's at, in your facility. Mm -hmm. And you could bring in rats and mice. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. so if you're going to have a bigger, so maybe you want to go for something smaller like this guy, if yeah. it's not put together. Yeah. So, but if you have a big one, because how much does an average bird consume per day of feed? So it changes depending on the breed, changes depending on the size of the bird, um, but not a whole lot. A uh, third to a quarter of I was, a pound. Yeah, like yeah. It, it's a third to a quarter of a pound is a great way to, yeah. Not a lot. They're, yeah. they're going to eat yeah. very little. Uh, and it grows as they grow, but then it'll top out at around that third to a quarter of a pound. I think if I remember right, it takes to get a chick to the point of when you bring it home to when you switch it to mm -hmm. layer, it takes an average of 10 pounds per chick. Right. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. To get to, okay. So like, that's one of those things. So we have those small bags of NatureWise starter. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, like what is yeah, those little guys back over there? there. Um, <laughs> but if you're buying six or eight birds, go bigger. Get go a bigger. big, get a big bag. You're gonna use it. Okay. And hopefully you just clicked on a link and got ten dollars off. There you go. Right? And, 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 and Heather, <laughs> yes, there's a link on there. Uh, we posted that. We'll also, when we're done, we'll share this. But Matt, can you throw that slide up again? Um, just so she can see 
what it was. I believe it's like uh, it's, neutrinos. It'll pop up here in a second. I'll read it for you. It's neutrino something. Uh, C dash the dash difference. difference. Yeah, yeah. neutrinoworld.com backslash C backslash C dash, dash the, the dash, dash difference. difference is what it is. So um, if you just go to that um, URL, um, and then we also have it posted there, or if you're on our website, um, we have this a banner there that you can click on on this chick chat just below this video um, to see that and, and go to that. But uh, yeah, that's that's really a good deal. Can't pass it up. And so, moving on from feeders, now to Darcy. They're laying eggs, <laughs> they're doing good. Let's start with going and collecting eggs all the way to washing or not washing there we go. the eggs. <laughs> That's where the hint, hint. Comes there in. you go. Um, you want to collect your eggs very frequently, and the more frequently, the less chances you have that somebody will get in there and step on an egg break an egg, and then you have a whole new mm -hmm. level of crock pot. Yes. <laughs> um, once, once a bird breaks an egg, you, you many times will have to either remove that bird from the flock or it will teach the others what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And it can be an accidental step on, so you want your bedding to be very deep in your nest boxes. So speaking of nest boxes and making sure, you know, um, maybe it's good to then get something like, like this guy. You know, this yes. is something that just mounts to the wall. Yep. That little thing they can get in there, and then it makes it. Well, yeah, it's a, it's yeah, a, I know. Darth Vader, one of the other. Right. Uh, but yeah, scrolls. We sell these at Coles. This is a Miller little giant deal. Yep. Mm -hmm. But then that way, it's keeping it off the ground. Correct. And keeping it nice and clean, and makes it easy for you to get out, get in and out, and clean e them. Exactly. And the way they're mounted, you can pop them off and yep. clean them. Very clean them back. Yeah, get them out and, and even hose them, them out. Disinfect yeah, them. Because they just like so. Slips yeah, it just slips in. down in there, yep. kind of like hanging. So, like disinfectant, what what do you recommend for that? Like, if we're cleaning this kind of stuff, um, you could use a product like Vercon, which is a, a mixed product. You can use any any type of viricide that is labeled for use in animal mm -hmm. facilities. Ten percent chlorine bleach works too. Okay, so yeah, ten percent doing that, just a good way to clean that all out. Absolutely. So that's one way to keep those eggs up off the ground, keep them where hopefully they're not breaking them and creating a crock pot offenses correct right. yeah and um that when they you don't need a lot of nest boxes okay for, oh, okay so you don't need like one per bird you do not need one per bird <laughs> okay there you I, go I hate to kill sales on that no no you i know well hey there you go. <laughs> exactly no you need seven per bird because they like different days <laughs> of the week you know different places yeah um that once you can you can teach them where to go with something simple like one of these ceramic eggs. Well, we had a we have some too that are colored like yes. yellow and pink, yeah. so you don't accident like Easter egg lookers. You know, yeah. We accidentally broke one <laughs> on accident. I won't. Yeah, but those make it nice, and then you can tell the difference. It, it yeah. does because I can tell you I've had a near miss <laughs> fence, and thank God I shipped it to my parents. Oh <laughs> my gosh. When I was selling eggs, because they do feel very real, and they've got some weight to them. So, but they're not edible. There you go. <laughs> not edible. So I guess to talk about the wash or not to wash, um, I, it's a personal preference for a lot of people, but mm -hmm. I, I always like to tell this little story, and it's my my soapbox moment. If I if I come home some afternoon and uh, I need to go collect eggs, I've got my egg basket in one hand. I make myself a little sandwich because it's. I'm hungry. Yeah. And I walk down to the chicken coop. Well, I've got a sandwich in one hand and an egg basket in the other. How many people would be willing to put their sandwich in the nest box so they had a free uh -huh. hand to pick up the eggs? And I'm, I'm blonde, so I don't know. <laughs> to put the, the, the carrier down. So I'm holding that up. But um, then how many people would pick that sandwich back up and eat it? Not many. Bacteria, salmonella, all those things, you cannot see it, smell it, or taste it, yet it's there. You don't know what's been in and out of that, that nest box, what the chicken stepped in on the way to the nest box. Mm -hmm. So chances are there's some, something less than spectacular on the outside of the egg, even if you, it doesn't look dirty. So would I want to take that egg up to my house and just put it right into the refrigerator? Probably not. Because whatever's on the outside of that egg, refrigerators chill things, and they have a fan in there. And the minute that fan kicks on, anything that's on the outside of this egg is going to be all over last night's leftovers. leftovers. <laughs> yeah. 
and that's not very appealing. So I I'm, I'm prefer to wash eggs, but you always need to wash them in warm water. It needs to be hotter than the eggs. So if you bring in some eggs that have been outside and they're around 70 degrees, your water needs to be hotter than that because they're porous. And when you wash with colder water than what the egg temperature is, you drive bacteria in through those pores and into the egg, and that's how we get sick. And there's a lot of backyard production of farm fresh eggs, and we don't want to see anybody get sick because we don't really necessarily what? want the government to step in and say, no more backyard eggs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, and eggs, you're exactly right. Yeah. And so it's just safer to... It's safer to wash them and yep. warm wash. Now look... Warm, uh, I was going to say. Wash, it's you're warm. washing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, no, here we go. Yep. <laughs> um, these guys also sell an egg cleaner from Mana Pro. Um, it's one capful per gallon of water, and you just rinse the eggs off, and I set them off to the side and let them dry off, and then I measure them, sort them, and put them away in the container and put them in the fridge after the fact. Mm -hmm. Now, they, a lot of people say, well, I'm worried about washing my eggs because they'll get bad faster. We're probably not going to ruin an egg in a lot of time in of what 60 years. days. Because yeah. basically the last thing that goes on to the outside of an egg is what's called the bloom. Yep. So it's just a basically a, a sealant from the hen um, and it keeps oxygen from going into the egg and moisture from coming out. So those eggs do last longer. You can store them unwashed onto the counter mm -hmm. if you so desire. And in Europe that's yeah, that's standard all they, practice. As you say, that's how I do it. So well, mine they, don't get washed um, and they stay on the counter. Well, and two, I mean, you may have said this when I was, I was helping look at something, but two, if you have a clean nest box and you're collecting daily, some of those will be very clean. I mean, they're not going to have mm -hmm. stuff on them. Like you said, just brush them off. Um, you know, uh, an elderly neighbor of ours that over here, like they've had, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know. You go back to that, you, what you, you don't know what's been in that next box. Yeah, no, that's true, that's true, exactly. And so, but like, you know, like you said, in Europe, you know, they, a lot of them, they don't refrigerate them, we refrigerate them. But like you said, if, if we, if you do refrigerate, you must stick to refrigerate, don't then store them on the counter. Yes. You can go, you can go to refrigeration, but don't come back don't out come to back storage. Out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So if you're going to, yeah, start with one and stick with one. Yeah. But shoot, eggs don't last long enough at our house anyways. I don't know who these people uh, are that are, you know. Who's, who's <laughs> raising birds to get eggs that wants to keep them for months on Yeah, it? exactly. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, and we have we have seven kids roaming around here. And when we make scrambled eggs, it's a good two dozen eggs. You make French toast, it's 18. You make fried eggs, it's about 18. So, yeah. you, you know, keeps you going. <laughs> No, that's good, and those are those are good things. Um, Travis has a question: uh, How long do you keep unwashed eggs on the counter? And I think that goes back to as long as you haven't gone into the fridge yet, you, they're going to be fine for quite a while. You can tell me what you think. Two weeks, three I, weeks. Yeah, I was going to say two to three weeks, totally fine. Yeah. Um, if you are in doubt, I float test yeah. uh, just just well, in case. Um, but. Yeah. So in that, that flow, just going to that flow test for people that may not know, they're new to this. That's just simple of putting, you know, getting, I, I get a like a nice glass bowl or something so you can see it and it's yep. deep yep. enough. Yes. Um, fill it with water, cold water. Right. And put your eggs in. Put, and. Do you only, have an egg? Where's your egg at? Only put the eggs in that <laughs> yeah. you are planning on using, right? Because we want to make sure that we're leaving that bloom as intact yep. as possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if we're checking, like if you're going to use five eggs, check five eggs. If one's bad, check a six egg, right? Like. Use what you're going to use, All right. um, and then as it goes down... Maybe Matt, you can zoom in on this egg, we'll show A you. really good egg <laughs> sits flat. Yep. A egg that is coming to time floats. Okay. Well, <laughs> or it sits upright. Up, sits sits straight upright. Straight upright. And if it's now, really if it floats, old, it'll it, go to the If top. it's floating, <laughs> do not eat this egg. <laughs> well, be, be very careful, because it might break, and then you'll Do really not sweet. crack this egg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't like this egg's no good. This egg goes outside or in a trash can, something yeah. far away from where you this, are. Yeah, that's, bag, yeah. that's one that's really bad. Here, 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 here fine. Here, fine. Here, totally fine. Yeah. Yep. Here, do not touch this yeah. egg. <laughs> yeah. The taking time bomb. Right. Yeah, so that's really the best way. And, and like you said, um, yeah, that's, that's always a foolproof way to check out right. to know. The refrigerator um, does keep them much longer, though. Yeah. It does, yeah. And so, um, Travis, going back to that, you said, you know, when do you transfer them to the fridge? Like you said, you can keep them on the, on the 
counter for up to two weeks, but once you transfer them to the fridge, you want to keep them there. And everybody will understand that's ever done a store-bought hard-boiled egg, and you see that dimple when you go to peel it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, those are the old eggs, and that's why they cook. The air pocket. Yeah. That's the air pocket, because it... it that, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what makes it... All, all the eggs that we buy out of the grocery store have been washed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they do, yeah. And then yeah. they yeah. do them that way. And, and they've industrial. been refrigerated. Yes. So. Yeah. so that's why we got to keep them refrigerated. Right. Yep. Correct. Nope, there you go, that's good. Um, cool, so now that we've talked about the eggs, um, let's say we have a mother hen that's, that's, let's say we do have a rooster, and we have a mother hen that's broody. How, how do we tell, you know, how do we know for sure, like if she's, if, if she's laying on eggs, if, if I, we should leave those, if we should take them? You know, typically with ours, there's always one that's broody, she's just huddled down and she's always staying on them. So, how long do you guys like to leave them and keep them and let them be, or do you want to check them, or what? what what's your take on that? Well, if if they've got a nest full of eggs, they're going to be there for 28 days mm -hmm. if they're fully broody. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't want chicks, then you you, keep, you take you some eggs. eggs. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to do it? You want to do it regular Regularly. because yeah. you don't want them, yeah, yeah, crack open and have. And that's yeah, you don't. Want trust that. me, that's we've had that happen before. It's like whoops. Oh. Yeah, that's a rough that's day. That's yeah. not fun. Yeah. yeah, that's a bad day. So yeah, if you don't want babies, you pull you those eggs, eggs regularly. They don't. It doesn't hurt that bad. They get a little feisty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's there's an, attitude, <laughs> there's an attitude. There's an attitude. But pull the eggs if you don't. If you don't want the little ones. Yeah. And the, honestly, like if you are sure that you want the little ones. Um, it's kind of a cool project. It get, is. It, get a candler. Like, take a look. Watch yes. the progress. Watch um, put the egg back under her. She's not going to leave it. Like, no, she's, yeah. she's having a good time. Um, and she will leave her nest from time to time to get food and yep. stuff like that. That's all normal. So, if, so like if, you said, it's 28 days, yep. and then they'll start, they'll start hatching. They'll start happening. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, like, and, too, if you don't have a candler, I mean, just a nice... Good little flashlight some, sometimes can even work too. Just shine it and you'll look and make sure it's dark and you can see mm -hmm. see, the, see if there's the, something in there. It's so cool. No, it yeah. really is cool. Yeah. It really yeah. is cool. It's cool. So so then I know someone hasn't asked it yet, but in the past people asked that. You know, if you have a rooster, you know, they when you crack an egg, what's that little speck in there? Is that something bad? Is that a bad thing? Do we need to watch for that? I mean, should I not eat that no, egg? No, it's, you know? it's the blast of fear is what it's yep. called. And it, it is not a bad thing. It's not going to harm you. It's... Yeah, kind of a, it's a sign of a rooster. Yeah, yeah. 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 sign of a rooster. Yep. Yeah. Um, on other egg things, uh, just thinking of questions that have come up in the past. Um, you know, uh, those eggs will get once in a while that are like a stress ball. I mean, they're they're clear. You know, I'm like you know what I'm saying. I don't know how to say it, but it's like a, it just like comes out. And it's like wait a second, this is missing reptile something. Reptile eggs. Or reptile eggs. Yeah. yeah. They they don't have calcium on them. And, yeah. And that's a misfire. You can get all kinds of oddball misfires that happen. You'll and that's not that's not anything to worry about with your chicken. No, it's just a it's just the way, yeah, it, it happens. It's, usually, it happens mm -hmm. with young birds mm -hmm. that are just starting to lay, mm -hmm. and they haven't quite got the whole process under control hormonally inside of them, and so they'll come with the the little tiny eggs or eggs with no yolks or those reptile eggs. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but that's yeah, that's nothing wrong. So there's an interesting thing that I learned, which I think from one of you guys to talk about it. You know, with with. With hens, they they only have a limited amount of yep. eggs. Yep. They have yep. it's like little grape vines in there, right? What, what's you know? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. That's when when a hen reaches maturity, mm -hmm. she'll have what looks like a cluster of grapes inside of her, and those are all the eggs that, that she she'll have, ever lay. That yeah. she'll ever lay, and we can alter the lifespan of the hen in the the group mm -hmm. basically by either providing light and keeping them laying year round because mm -hmm. they'll use those little grape clusters mm -hmm. faster. Or we can let Mother Nature do what she naturally does, and they quit laying or slow down laying in the winter. In the and winter. Fall. And, then and it's, all, yeah. it's all light-driven, pretty much. They need about 16 hours of daylight. So, so on that, um, you know, right now we're not having to worry about it because we're going the opposite way. Right. It's right. spring. We're getting more and more light. Mm -hmm. But let's say this fall rolls around. You know, these birds are getting full-grown. They're maybe starting to lay. And then all of a sudden, people are going to be wondering why they stop laying. You know what happened so let's talk about that light you know what what's the best way and what what are some things maybe athena too that we carry at coastal that can help with that you know i mean 
Do way to put me on the spot. I said, way to put me on the spot. Well, yeah, you can just pick in when we'll let Darcy, we'll put Darcy on the spot. We'll let Darcy talk, and then you can kick in when, you know, there's some products Anytime. and things, you know. Kick That's right. I mean, we got yeah. lights. Lights, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's it. Now, the timing on the lights is the critical part, because mm -hmm. birds are very, they're night blind. So you want to let Mother Nature put them to bed, and in the morning, you... So the phones we have nowadays are ideal because they tell you exactly when yeah. the sunrise is. Yes. So you set a timer and your light and have it come on. So you continue that 16 hours of light and then you have it go off when you've reached that. You know, if we have, if we have eight hours of darkness, mm -hmm. you make that light go on for eight hours and, or yeah, Excuse yeah. me, eight hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's got to add up to 16. So do you want, do you <laughs> Whatever it is, add up to 16. So, so is it better to put that light in the morning yes. to wake them up yep. earlier versus it continue at the end of the Correct. day? Correct. Okay. You don't want it to go off in the middle of the night because there they'll be. Like what happened? Right. Yeah. And they will okay. their way back to the perch. Okay. So, yeah. so, I mean, really like the way we've done, I think, I don't know if we still carry them or not, but those little... Plug in timers, mm -hmm. you know, and, and yes. then plug yep. your, you know, you can take a brooder lamp like this even and reuse it just by putting a, a regular light a bulb regular in light it. Bulb. You all don't want to really do a heat no. bulb. There's no need for that. 25 watts is all it takes. Okay. A little, wow, that's not very much. A string of white mm -hmm. Christmas lights does the trick. Oh, even Christmas lights do yeah. it. Oh, okay. Well, then what? make, shoot, that, decorate your, 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 your you know, yeah, your festive. Your and very right. festive year round, you know? <laughs> Yeah. It's like a fancy bistro in the evening, you yeah. know? <laughs> but another reason that you might see that decline in eggs going into winter would be molt. Molt is another mm -hmm. problem. Uh, so yeah. molt typically doesn't happen their first winter, but that second winter. So you've gone through one and you were like, I know everything there is yeah, yeah. to know about the <laughs> Exactly. Guess what? <laughs> the second winter, you're like, all of my birds are naked. Yeah. <laughs> it just yeah. happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe they joined one of those groups. They call it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so molt is a natural process where they're going to shed their feathers um, and it, it affects every bird at a different degree, I would say, yeah. but we're going to lose a little from the chest, the back. Some birds, it's really light. Mm -hmm. You'd barely even notice. Other birds are out there completely naked. <laughs> naked. <laughs> yes. Um, and during that time, they become non-productive members of society yeah, or freeloading stop. slackers. Freeloading yes. slackers. They, yeah. they stop laying because they're using all of that protein in their body to create new feathers. Mm -hmm. um, and what's in an egg but protein yeah, and fat, exactly. right? So like mm -hmm. they, they're using it to make those new feathers. So with this NatureWise uh, feather fixer right here in the front, yep. it's one got my favorite bird. Yeah, <laughs> That is my bird. favorite yeah. chicken. Yep. Um, but two, <laughs> It's a higher protein and a very, very cool amino acid complex in that protein that's going to allow them to grow those feathers back quickly gotcha. um, because we want them back as productive members of society. So then they'll, so once they're, yeah, so in a sense, they're just changing. They, they only create so much, they only have so much energy and protein. Right. So if they're healthy, it's going to be going into the eggs. Well, when right. that starts, when something else falls off, they're going to just switch and start putting into yeah. that. Yeah, and a lot of things affect eggs, uh, like a little bit of sudden stress. Right. Mm -hmm. can affect mm -hmm. egg production. Introducing new birds to a flock can affect egg production. But if you see that it is uh, specifically that they're losing those feathers, then you know it's going to be, or it should it hopefully should be, be molt at this yeah. right time. Gotcha. Because uh, yeah. sometimes unhealthy birds will also lose feathers. So if it's one by itself who's acting sluggish or anything, then quarantine look um, them. and look for well, and, and Two, there's some people that feed that year round. Like if oh, you're with sure. show birds and stuff. Yeah. Because it'll it, make... Beautiful plumage, right? Yeah, no, pretty birds for sure. There you go. So it, it pretty bird. Pretty it bird. does. It makes the <laughs> it makes the feathers a bit more vibrant than than other feeds do. So, gotcha. So it's a very very good show feed for show birds. Cool. Well, you mentioned another thing um, about uh, introducing stress, introducing birds flock. So Ooh. when when do we take and introduce these into the flock? You know, we we kind of jumped around here, but I forgot to mention that. You know, they're getting to that ugly stage, they're getting whatever. When should we go and... Kick them out of your yeah, house? kick them out of the house. Be gone! Be like, here. <laughs> they need to be, if you're going to put them in with other birds, you need to do it in a graduated process. Okay. So, and they need to be able to be without the light, which you decrease the heat by five degrees. We forgot to mention that, I did. Every week? Uh, every week until the outside temperature and what they're capable of tolerating 
is, is approximately. Well, and two, another good thing, the reason why we do this in the spring mm -hmm. is because, and why the chicken well, yeah, actually happen in the spring, we're getting warmer. So this is Correct. a naturally good time to do that. Correct. Yeah. And so, but they want to be about like size to what you're introducing them to and fully feathered. Mm -hmm. Because there will be beatings. We yeah, there will. Yep. Birds being hierarchical. And so they need to have the best chance possible to be able to protect themselves. And you can put them in like a, a, a dog crate or a X pen or something out where the birds, the older mm -hmm. birds can see them. I'm fortunate with my setup. I can put a, a uh, You have a divider? divider? Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So they can look at each other for a while and mm -hmm. I've got two sides to it, so we're good. Um, not everybody's fortunate. Yeah, that a, yeah, yeah right. exactly. So it depends on what their setup is. You can is. get really creative, but let them see each other for a couple weeks without interacting mm -hmm. and then when you do let them get in with each other, do it at night. Take the young birds, put them on the roost with the older birds, and then oh, okay. when they wake up, it's not, it's kind of like, oh. Hey, look hey. at that new friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. There you so, go. But there's also the flock blocks. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those are huge. So That's your size. Yeah. So we carry, <laughs> uh, y'all carry in the store, there's Country Companion Scratch Blocks. Because um, inevitably, like when yep. they now have that mm -hmm. new friend, your coop's going to be a little louder than it normally is. Mm -hmm. They have to decide what their order is going to be. Mm -hmm. But if you throw something else to distract them and you're like, hey, peck this instead of each other, uh, it does yeah. help yeah. a whole lot. Yeah. So like having, having that treat there. Uh, is is ideal in those moments. Makes yeah. a better difference. Okay. Yeah. Gives them something else to beat up on. The right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like numbers of birds, introducing like numbers of birds to yeah. what your flock existing is is important too. Introducing one to twenty. Is that poor bird. Oh, yeah. okay. That yeah. poor bird. Every every one of those other. It will get. Gonna take a shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shot at it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, and, and I've heard too. I know some people too. Kind of like it's all, the opposite. Like I'm doing with my when I'm weaning calves, I'll fence line weed them. You know, you'll put a the fence there and, or you know hot wire and they can still see each other and do stuff but then they'll eventually separate apart mm -hmm. so, so i know some people we carry the um the electric what's that the, one called the coop door openers the, well the coop door well there's those but then that the electric fence like the, the rollout the netting oh, the, the netting. Netting. Poultry netting. Netting. yeah oh, the poultry netting. netting so they'll in a sense set that up in the pin mm -hmm. and so they can kind of see them and hear them and mm -hmm. kind of check them out <laughs> and then take that away too and that's a good that's a good way to do it as well that yes. would be great so. yeah. yeah that's also excellent for predator <laughs> yeah but no yeah no, it is great actually it works really that well that raccoon's like what so, just happened no, same as same with this with this with this door right mm -hmm. so yeah. explain that a little bit because i i really think that's great for predators as well the door that we have comes with a timer and you can attach it to any coop i think that's like i don't remember the actual the actual That's specs on the width or whatever. Yeah. On the width that it can open, mm -hmm. but it can do pretty large doors like an actual door. Yeah, because it's just, it's, it's like a, be, just a little, you can just, an, a solenoid actuator that will mm -hmm. just, it, it comes on rails and it just opens. Yeah. And you can set, like you said, plug it in, it opens and closes at set times. So if you know, I guess the best way in my mind to know when those girls would be in and out is kind of just check, hey, well, when are they always going in? Right. When mm -hmm. are they always going to be out? Because You'd hate to have the door closed and one try to comes in after no. curfew. Right? You know? That's super nice though, because like I can't count the amount of times that I've been driving home and I'm like, they're gonna know I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're so mad. That's, that's funny. Yeah. But no, that and that would help with predators because that way you're always closing it up in the evening. Yeah. 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 Or just get you one of them giant Brahma whatever ones. And <laughs> The predators will be, I mean, I'm scared of those things. They're like big. They're so cool. Yeah, they're, they're so cool. They're cool. And they're actually pretty friendly though too, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're fun. Big old Brahma. Big old ones. But yeah, so that's another good way um, to help with that and help with predators and, and just do that. But no, I, like I said, I'm, I'm, if you guys have any other questions, you know, please feel free to ask. Um, but, you know, we've kind of gone through everything from picking up the chicks at Coastal, taking them home in this fun little box. With your coupon on it. Well, some of them have a coupon, I thought. Go not. to the website. And then, the oh, coupon. that's on the website now. Yep. Yes. Um, and then uh, getting your brood. So picking them up, getting your brood rock set up, um, getting them fed, taking them then to transition into their adult feed when they start laying, mm -hmm. you know, getting them used to those other chicks at home. Or if you're starting something new, like in, your, in an ideal world, 
What would you guys say? <clears throat> I'm going to lose my voice here. If you're building a new coop, you know, we, we offer some great coops at Coastal. We have some big ones. We have some small ones. But um, in, in, in an ideal size, you know, I'd say the average person probably takes home five or six chicks. Mm -hmm. You know, five or six, five might live. You know, maybe all of them will live. And they put them in their backyard. How big of a run and stuff do you think would be ideal for that? I know there's a square footage rule, but I can't remember it. Yeah, about three square feet per, per bird. bird at maturity. Yeah. At maturity. Yeah. So, so like you said, so you can figure that out. And then two, that helps with, I know like we have a chicken pen that we have. It's a little overburdened right now, mm -hmm. but it'll, they'll eat all the grass. It'll turn gray and mm -hmm. turn brown. And then next spring, it'll kind of start popping up again. They'll eat it all down because that's probably, there's too many birds per square foot. But if you want to keep it that I, way, <laughs> I was going to say you can have one, one bird, bird in that, <laughs> and it'll do the same thing. Yeah, you're not going to have grass in a coop. So it's you not going to have. You need to work on it. You know, right. it's gone. There you go. You'll need astroturf or right. something. Then, you know. But it is always a good idea uh, when you're picking up chicks to figure out the prices of those coops. So that if anybody has promised to build you one, <laughs> you know you have six to seven weeks, maybe a little longer, there depending on how temperatures go. And threaten them that if they, it's if not it's ready. not done, <laughs> that coop at Coastal costs this much, there you go. and I will be buying That's it. That's right. There yeah. you go. No, we do. We have some cool ones. The what's the I, the name brand is, is leaving me right now. The Rugged Ranch. The ones. Rugged Ranch ones are cool. Um, and then we have like small ones too. Mm -hmm. The big giant uh, uh, hint. Oh, what's it called? They're made by Amish back east somewhere. We get them in the, kits. We have the. We have the Pueblo Grande chicken coops, the over easy chicken over coops. Over easy, that's what I'm thinking. And those come in like, they look like houses with windows yeah. and they're insulated. Those yeah. are really cool. Those yeah. like, are neat. Those are yeah. fancy, like you, you got fancy birds. Pick out a good one and hold it over their head. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Whoever's made Kentucky this Kentucky fried promise. chicken on the side. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's funny. But no, there's like, like you said guys, um, if you ever have any questions on this stuff, feel free to ask on this. We'll monitor um, these comments um, going forward and try to respond to them. But literally, chickens are fun. They can be a lot of fun. They, they're not, I mean, they are a lot of work, but they're not. I mean, yeah. they're just, it's, it's overwhelming when you first get started, but you know what? Swing by your local coastal, talk to an expert like Athena. You know, we have people in every store. We, we love, one of the, our things that we love to do is we love to hire kids that have come up on a farm, come up through 4-H, FFA, stuff like that, um, because a lot of times they know a lot of the stuff and they, they have a personal experience with it. It's not just what they read or watched, you know. No. They've, they've personally raised birds, they've shown birds and things like that. And so... Um, you know, and it, the thing that I, I think is always interesting as we've done these over the years, people, people come in and they're so worried yeah. yeah, and it's really there's no magical mystical thing. No, to getting these yep. chicks up to, to speed. Yep. So it takes heat, water, food, bedding. Exactly. You're, right. You're there. Yep. So and then no, it it really and it's and you know it's okay for kids to handle them. Just be careful that they're not you know the chicky burrito. Yeah, you know, the chicky mm -hmm. burrito. You know, <laughs> or smothering too, them too much. I know you know, like my kids will handle them and they'll get comfortable with them and they'll want to curl up next to them and that's so fun and, and there's nothing wrong with that you know wash hands yes, wash, wash your hands, hands wash yeah. hands you wash know? hands and that's a before and after yep. not just an after because not only stuff yeah that, not right. only are we protecting you from them we're protecting them from you yep. and, and year after year you want to disinfect everything before you yep. bring in a new cloth before, before you bring yeah. something in yep yeah yep. no that's you know, for sure that way you get rid of or whatnot yeah you don't know if there's been rats and mice walking over the top of it so clean it all up and start fresh and, and the heat lamps, we almost messed up. Oh, to buy more than one bulb. <laughs> never, Murphy's Law, yeah. always get two heat lamps when you go home because they never burn out at the right time. So yep, don't buy always, one, I know. buy two. Yeah. Well, and two, the, and I think we mentioned earlier, just to reiterate it, there's, there's the red ones and the, the white ones. And these Are these all shatterproof ones? I'm trying to think. We, we carry Not the shatterproof all are. because no. you want to make sure if they get water or get something on there when yeah. you're cleaning, it doesn't just... Psh, yeah, yeah. Ducks, are the, ducks are the worst with that, so you never put your <laughs> you water ducks dish. Are, ducks, <laughs> ducks are move water? Ducks. What? No. <laughs> you never put your water anywhere near the heat lamp. It's always as far away from the heat lamp as possible. Yeah, yeah I mean, but that chickens too. Like, you don't yeah. want the water. Yeah. The water shouldn't be under the heat lamp. No, under the heat the lamp should be hot. free space in yes. case the birds need to be under there. There you go. Yep. 
Uh, we do have another, two more questions that I didn't catch. And Travis asked, is there any difference when it comes to feeding throughout the year, when it comes to the colder months, when they slow down or stop laying? Um, so when it comes to food, yes and no. Uh, so you can stay the exact same throughout the year, um, and that's fine. If you are lighting them artificially, uh, it is nice in the winter to add just a little bit of protein to help encourage oh, okay. that egg production. So you can get a higher protein in the winter um, if you want to encourage that egg production. If you're not lighting them, stay the exact same. Um, don't decide that because they're not laying, they don't need a layer because they still need those vitamins, those minerals and everything that it's in that. So feed them consistently. And, and that's winter, I think, and you tell me if I'm wrong on this, but winter's when people start to throw in the scratch grains yep. here. Mm -hmm. And that's that doesn't really, yeah. work very well because mm -hmm. it, it does a couple of different things. A, it's not good nutrition. Right. Mm -hmm. And B, it'll create more fat on the bird. And when they go to lay the next year, that's sometimes when you'll see some egg binding and you'll see some problems. Because okay. Of because of that too much fat in there. Fat hands and yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Well, that's good to know. And two. So yeah. Like I said, if you ever have any questions, please feel free to ask. Come in and ask one of our um, experts in the store, like Athena. And with any of this stuff, with any of the feeds, you know, there's a guarantee on them. If there's ever any issues, bring them back. Uh, you know, uh, Neutrina guarantees. But not only is that, but Coastal does. Um, you want to talk a little about the feed guarantee that we have, Athena, or? You want me to go ahead and talk about it? If you want to. No, that's my. That's, no, what it is is I don't want to take your. You know, I, I worked in the store a long time ago, but so um, is any of these bags. If you feed it and it's moldy, there's any issues, you get down to the bottom of it and you just you don't like it. Bring it back to us and we'll we'll take care of you. I don't care if it's you've eaten a cup. I don't care if you there's a cup left in the bag. We will always take care of you because we want to make sure that you guys are raising and growing the best animals, whether they're chickens, cows, horses, sheep, llamas, I don't know, alpacas. Alpacas, ostrich. I saw a zebra. There's going to be a zebra at the Eugene auction this weekend. <laughs> That's weekend. exciting. So even zebras. I don't so know, you know, you're getting a zebra? Kangaroo? Well, I don't know. Do we, do we have a, do we, I don't know. We carry zebra food. I don't know, but. Well, I could absolutely you could set absolutely up a diet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For can sure. Do, can we do a Facebook Live on, on yes. feeding zebras? Yes, okay. we can. That's well, interesting. I'll see if Coastal will float the bill for me. Let me buy perfect, one. Perfect. We'll, we'll the Coastal zebra. But. No, we, we always want to help you guys do that and make your farm successful because when you guys are successful we're successful and uh yeah it's just it's a lot of fun so cool well, anything else you guys want to add to end uh, no thank you to you guys for having yeah. us no this. it is always fun <laughs> i look forward to this every year and like i said guys tune in because we do these a lot uh with different things not just chickens um we have talks on like i said all these other animals we've talked mm -hmm. about and so it makes it a lot of fun and yeah. yeah, chicks yeah. are just fun. Chicks are fun. It's it's yeah. a lot more fun than it is stress. Like yeah. Yeah. they're they're it's, stress taker yeah. away. It's that's not, a right way to say it. It's <laughs> not as intimidating as it looks. Yeah, no, no, yeah. No. no, they are a lot of fun. So yeah, um, in closing, just remember, uh, Matt, if you want to throw that up there again, um, where they can go to get that ten dollar coupon. NutrinaWorld.com slash slash c dash the dash difference. Yeah. That's right. Um, and he'll throw that slide up there uh, to end us off. But, um, yeah, check that out. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.